In honor of Venom's appearance in Marvel's Spider-Man 2 for PlayStation, we're going to be making a symbiote sample in a bottle that even moves on its own. So let's jump into it. I've seen handmade symbiote display pieces online that look cool and light up but don't really do much of anything else. Sure, they look great in your game or movie room, but I wanted a little something more. I dreamt up this idea of using ferrofluids for a Venom symbiote and magnets to move it around a while ago, but never really knew how to make that dream a reality. Until now. And let me tell you, it wasn't an easy road to get here. But let's start at the beginning. The design. I had a short list of things that were a must in this design. Number one, the symbiote part needs to move on its own and look like it's alive without any help from a puppeteer like me or you or anybody else. Number two, it has to look cool. Venom is awesome and the display piece needs to look awesome and black and maybe a little white too. Number three, that's it. There's really only two. When I said a short list, I mean a really short list. Coming up with ideas is easy, but making them a reality is the hard part. Especially when you have very little experience designing models to 3D print, you've never created anything new with electronics, and you've never written any code before either. What's code? Yeah, it's gonna be a long road. Let's start with what I know so far. Ferrofluid is basically tiny metal particles suspended in a liquid that react to the presence of magnetic fields. It makes all kinds of cool and mesmerizing shapes depending on how it is displayed and manipulated. And in doing some further research, I found out that it is very difficult to work with. It stains everything, it's flammable, and if not properly stored, it can break down. It's perfect though. It looks awesome, and with some ingenuity, I think we can use it to make a pretty cool project. Speaking of projects, if you need some help with yours, you should check out PCB Way, which is today's video sponsor. PCBWay.com is a printed circuit board manufacturer that provides a wide variety of options for prototyping and assembly. Their online store combined with their shared projects section offers thousands of potential projects to work on. And PCBWay is also featuring its six project design contest right now too. You can submit your own original electronics or mechanical designs for a chance to win some awesome prizes by January 15th, 2024. The rules, prizes, and current submissions are all available to look at in the link in the description. I would like to thank PCBWay for sponsoring today's video and be sure to check out PCBWay.com for all your project's needs. Now back to the build. So after spending hours online researching ferrofluid, I found a few amazing resources that already had solved the previous issues. I found if you contain ferrofluid in a saltwater solution, it will prolong the effects of it breaking down and it doesn't stain the inside of the glass either. It's also a lot less flammable this way too. I loosely followed a wonderful instructable to make my bottles and thought they turned out great in the end. I picked up these specific bottles for a few bucks at Hobby Lobby and began to prepare them for this project. Be warned though, this process is painstakingly long and requires a lot of steps to complete it properly. I basically followed the steps in the Instructable, but I'll give you a few tips if you decide to make your own too. First tip, give yourself enough time to make everything and don't rush. There are many times during the cleaning and the filling of the bottles where you must let them sit undisturbed. I've read this in multiple places and movement to the ferrofluid or even the saltwater brush can disrupt the process and cause failures in your bottles like staining. Second tip is prepare for this to get messy. I did most of the work inside of a plastic container and I'm glad I did. I also wore some gloves too. I found that if you do spill some of the ferrofluid or just need to clean up your containers like I did, you can use bleach and it will break it down faster and clean it up easier. Third is to fully fill your containers with salt water. I wanted to get more than an eyedropper worth of ferrofluid in each bottle and after filling two and having them spill everywhere, I thought it would be a great idea to pour out some of the salt water first. Then you can fill the bottle with ferrofluid and the salt water doesn't spill everywhere, right? Wrong. Do not do this. I don't know why this made sense to me at the time, but it just destroys the barrier the brine solution provides and causes immediate staining on the glass. The fourth tip is filter your salt water solution and clean the tops of the bottles carefully. Salt crystals will form on the bottle tops and you don't want crystals in your solution. So clean the bottles carefully and filter it out as best as possible. It didn't work the greatest for me, but I used coffee filters before filling my vials and after filling, I used some paper towels to clean the tops before sealing them up. I love the way these bottles turned out and I made extras on purpose just in case one of them didn't work or became stained. While I was waiting for these to settle, I started working on the 3D modeling of the vial holder. I've never used any formal 3D design software and I've never done any in-depth 3D designs before either. I found a basic web-based software called Tinkercad that you can use for free and started my journey there. Thankfully, it is easy to use and understand and after some tinkering, I made a rough draft of a model to print and see how it would function in the real world. After 
several adjustments to the design, I was pretty happy with what I had and pressed print for the last time. I moved on to the electronics next and immediately hit a roadblock. I knew I wanted to use an Arduino to control everything and bought a kit that included a bunch of different parts. I also picked up a small electromagnet that was already mounted on a small control board so I didn't need to make any new circuits from scratch. Everything was all hooked up and it could barely lift a little metal screwdriver. This marks the beginning of my dark descent down the rabbit hole for knowledge that I had yet to possess about electronics. Research why it doesn't work well. Maybe it needs more power. Make my own power pack. Done. I quickly find out that one electromagnet was not going to cut it, so I bought one more. But how do you hook them both up? And how do you code that? More research. So two magnets work way better than one. They are properly powered, but that's not enough to move the ferrofluid like this. So I bought two more. More research on how to code and hook them up. Finally, a prototype. That doesn't work. More research. Buy a bigger magnet, but it won't have enough power. More research for how to power it. Found a wall plug that will power it, but just realized it doesn't come with a control board. Guess what? More research. Found out MOSFET transistors are perfect for the job, but I have no idea which one to get, so I bought a kit of a bunch of them. It's now powered. It's coded. It's controlled. It's done. Time to test it out. It works. Just need to tweak the program so that the fluid moves a bit more like this and then adjust and reprint everything again. Now that I have all the basic parts together, time to assemble. I super glued all of the base parts together and hot glued some LEDs onto the part that will hold the magnet to. Added some wires to attach them and shrunk them down with some heat shrink tubing to cover the solder points. I also need a more permanent circuit design for the electronics, so I have to build that too. I used some double-sided test boards and solder bridged the reverse side to make the pathways. This worked great and it's way smaller now. It will even fit inside the bottom of the base if I wanted it to. On to the last few details. I added a label on the front to identify the sample. And to finish it all out, the symbol on the top has to be white. So I quickly colored it in with a paint pen. But now the real question. Does this actually look like a captured Venom symbiote moving inside of a glass vial? Yes. Yes, it does. I'm super happy I was able to make this a reality and will probably tweak the outer design eventually so it doesn't look so blocky. But I was kind of going for an angular hourglass shaped spider design and I still think it looks great given that this is my first go with 3D design. This is a super cool project that I learned a lot from while doing it. And I'm super thankful for PCBWay sponsoring this video since all of those funds and then some have been poured into this project. I really hope you enjoyed this and as always, thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to support the channel so I can continue making more videos like these. We'll see you next time.